suppose that an official looking letter arrived at your home one day with, with your name typed on it. It was not laser printed on the front of the envelope. Well, opening the letter, you glance at the letterhead. It says very simply, the White House. Inside is a personal letter from the President of the United States inviting you to give him a telephone call on a given date and time to share with the national leader some suggestions of things you would like to see changed. I will take your call in person, said the writer. I'll make it worth your while. At the bottom of the letter is the signature of the president. It does not appear to be machine written. You say, honey, look at this. What do you think of this? Your spouse reads the letter and says, yeah, right. And I bet he has a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. Well, it looks real, you reply. I'm going to check it out. So you dial the White House number given in the letter to find out if it's true. A pleasant female voice answers, this is the White House. You say, uh, uh, this is Jane Jones. And I want to confirm that this invitation from the president I'm holding in my hand is for real. Well, may I ask what it says, you tell her. She replies, uh, just a moment, please. Let me, let me look up your name. A minute later, she's back. She addresses you respectfully by name and says, uh, Ms. Jones, uh, that invitation is for real. The president will be expecting your call this Thursday at 10 o'clock p.m. So you say, now get this. Well, I'm sorry, ma'am, uh, but I don't, uh, I won't be there. I doubt if I'll have time to talk to the president then. Uh, you see, I've got a favorite TV program that comes on about then, and, and I really want to watch it. So please tell the president thanks anyway. <laughs> What's wrong with this story? You ought to be excited out of your socks. I mean, who would pass up an opportunity like that? Yet we pass up even greater opportunities every day. Each of us has an open invitation for a private talk with the president of the universe. We're free to talk as long as we want to the one at the center of power. We have unlimited access to his throne. We can choose to become part of God's inner circle. And history has proven that we can trust him to hear and answer. Why do we neglect to take advantage of this most amazing opportunity ever offered to human beings? When life throws bricks at us, we don't have to take it lying down. We've got friends in high places. Years ago, my job as Voice of Prophecy speaker, director, well, it came with a rewarding perk. The speaker director got to read the incoming mail whenever I wanted to. Some of those incredible letters were heartwarming. Others were heart-wrenching and tragic, written by people who had problems piled on top of problems. But now and then, there was a rather humorous letter such as this one. The Lord is so good to me and I don't deserve it. A few years ago, I had a lot of trouble getting my social security check. They said, we sent it. So I blamed the post office. So the same old story kept on. I called our congressman. They tried, but still no check. I said, that's it. I'm sending a letter to the president. About a week or so later, I got a call on the phone. This is the White House calling. Have you gotten your check yet? I said, no. The lady said, we're going to take care of it now. Now, I was getting nowhere at our Social Security office. Three days after my call, the Social Security called and said, come right down. I said, what's the matter? Did the White House call you? Why, yes, they did. 
we never had a call from the White House before. Well, needless to say, I got so many checks, I don't know which one to keep. That's signed Adelaide Milburn, Erie, Pennsylvania, July 20, 1991. Notice why Adelaide was so effective. She went right to the top. Somehow she connected with the central power in her country, and all of a sudden things started happening. All of us have the same privilege, if we'll only take advantage of it. We have direct access to the throne of the universe through the miracle of prayer. David Cho discovered this truth as a young pastor. At the time, his name was Paul Yonggi Cho, and he pastored a church of 3,000 members. Well, some of his members decided they wanted him to spend more time with them in committee meetings, leadership councils, planning strategy sessions, and other groups. But Cho felt God was calling him to a new and deeper intimacy with him, so he resolved to spend four to five hours a day in prayer, not just one. Well, some of his members didn't agree with his priorities, and they left. Well, the upshot of the whole thing was that a few years later, his church had gone from 3,000 members to a mere 25,000 members. Now, maybe that doesn't sound very mere to you, but it really was because Cho's church in Seoul, Korea eventually reached, are you ready for this? More than 700,000 members. That's right, the largest congregation in the world. Would you like to know the secret behind the growth of this mega church? When he has asked his secret, Cho says that there are three secrets to successful church growth. Please note, you're about to get your hands on the secret recipe for church growth from the pastor of the largest congregation in the history of the planet. Secret number one, he says, is prayer. Secret number two, prayer. And number three is, you guessed it, prayer. Cho notes one great difference between the church in America and the church in Korea. The church in America has much program and little prayer. The church has much prayer and little program in Korea. David Cho is in charge of 700,000 church members, a daily Christian newspaper with a circulation of more than 1,800,000 missionaries whom the church sends around the world and a large Christian university. So how does he find time to pray for several hours a day? The answer, of course, is that it would be impossible to do all these things without praying several hours a day. You see, we don't lose time in prayer. We gain time. Why? Because God can solve problems in one moment that would take months for us to solve. A very busy person cannot afford not to pray. <laughs> it's like tithing. Tithing doesn't make you poorer, it makes you more prosperous. This is one of God's delightful little paradoxes, one of his surprises for those who love and obey him. Whatever we give to God, he gives back better. Martin Luther once said, I have so much to do that I must spend the first three hours of each day in prayer. The busier we are and the heavier our responsibilities, the more important it is for us to pray. Prayer warriors have discovered that our best and most creative ideas come to us when we spend quality time with God in prayer. Now, if you're merely rattling off a three-minute cookie-cutter prayer in the morning, you are missing some of the best ideas of your career. 
heartfelt prayer works. Well, that's what David Cho discovered too. His prayer time became so important to him that he told his secretary never to disturb him unless his wife called and said it was an emergency. True story. One day, the president of South Korea phoned and asked to be put through to Cho immediately, but his secretary refused. When the president finally got hold of Cho the next day, he was displeased. I want you to fire your secretary, he said. Uh, Sir, Cho replied, I cannot do that. I have given her orders not to disturb me for any reason. You see, I was talking to the president of the universe and he comes before you. Cho's church is not the only congregation full of praying Christians in that country. All of South Korea is aflame with prayer. Perhaps one reason for this is that the nation has the sword of Damocles hanging over its head. It has for several decades faced the prospect of invasion from North Korea. Ease and plenty lead to complacency, but danger drives men and women to God. So the Christians in Korea, South Korea, are the fasting and prayer champions of the world. Wesley Duwell in his book, Revival Fire, states that more than 20,000 Koreans have spent 40 days in fasting and prayer. On several occasions, more than one million have gathered to pray in Yoido Plaza, the largest prayer meetings in history. One million. Peter Wagner once visited another large Presbyterian church in Korea. He received an invitation to attend their early morning prayer meeting. The church had set aside a month to meet every single morning at five o'clock for an hour of prayer. Well, the morning Wagner visited, a terrible storm struck, and he suspected that not many would be present. Imagine his surprise to find 4,000 praying people filling every single seat in that auditorium at five o'clock in the morning. As a result of all this prayer, remarkable things happen in Korea, probably the most Christian nation in the world. One chaplain transferred to Korea from Germany discovered that the same sermons that elicited little response back home in Germany drew crowds and changed lives in Korea. You are coming under our prayer umbrella, David Cho explained. Well, part two tomorrow, you don't want to miss this, but could this prayer umbrella happen in America? or Canada, or England, or Australia? Can the Lord change America just as he did Korea? Here's what the Lord said to Solomon when he appeared to him that night, recorded word for word in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land.